I've got certain tender plants that I need to get through the winter, but I don't want to have massive fuel bills. So I've devised this method for my pelagoniums, particularly because I have a lovely collection of pelagoniums, which I built up over the ages. And um, I keep a lot inside, in a bedroom, on the windowsill, but there's not room for them all. So what I've done is I've concocted this frame, which is a board, um, and then what I've got, a Dutch light, an old Dutch light, which I put in this corrugated perspex top, which is a slightly better insulator than ordinary polythene because it's got the air within it. And then I've also got this lovely boarding, which you can see here, which I've cut. Now this, I think, was left over from putting underneath our kitchen floor, insulating that. Um, on a concrete bed. So when I'm trying to keep the coal out of my lovely plants, I'm looking at what is the best insulation material to use. So if you have um, a 600 millimeter wide stone wall, it has the same insulation value as a 215 brick wall, um, nine inch brick wall, and also 19 millimeters thickness of polystyrene. They all have the same insulation properties. And when you touch anything like this or this boarding, you, it feels warm. So I've got this little frame that I've knocked together, which is the same size as the Dutch light. And then I'm going to line it with these things all the way around the edge. And then I'll put that on the top. And I'll put it, um, when I've cleared out a bit of my greenhouse, I'll put it along the back wall when my tomatoes have gone. Um, and I will just watch the weather because sometimes they survive out all year in the winter. It takes a long time to recover in the spring, but, um, it's, but other times we'll have a frost. I mean, we had a frost back in September this year, just a light one, not enough to hurt the pelagonias. But the point I'm making is it's not predictable. You have to look at the weather forecast if you are dicing with their death. And these plants are quite big, and I will put them all in hugger mugger here. Um, I might have to repot that because I think it's going to be too deep. But some of my big pels, I'm going to just cut back radically. And as long as they've got a few leaves on, even if they didn't, it wouldn't matter. I would cut them back and I'd slot them all in here. I'll put them against the back wall and I'll take the top off when it's nice and balmy. And then I'll put it on the covers on the top when it looks like it's going to be really cold. And they could survive for a week, two weeks, three weeks in the dark. They would be absolutely fine. They would still, I mean, some people used to put them in the cellar over winter. They would still get through the winter. So that's one thing. And I also, obviously, as a backup, as I've got loads of these rooted cuttings of all my favourites that I did maybe, I don't know, two, three, four weeks ago. And I have loads more in my beautiful... Um, propagators now so I have a load of baby plants now these will tend to survive anyway um, at that size often little rooted cuttings are much hardier in a greenhouse over winter that's unheated than bigger plants for some reason I'm not sure why but it seems to be the case so that's one way to overwinter your pelagoniums um, and they, they're lovely I think some of these I mean they're really nice collection and they've come from good friends so it's nice to have them around now you might wonder why I've got all my tomatoes here. My tomatoes are looking scraggy, I um, fully admit to that, but I will go on picking my tomatoes off until Christmas. So I leave them in here, um, I pull off the odd bit that looks unhealthy, and they will go on ripening. Now this year I've got mainly bigger tomatoes in here, often I have the little mini tomatoes, um, and those Oh, not only do the little mini tomatoes start into fruit much, much earlier, but they go on much, much later. So I probably won't have so many this winter. Um, but as soon as Christmas comes or they look completely knackered, I'll whip them out and then I'll put my slatted shelving over here. I have some sort of Heath Robertson set up. And so I'll have seed trays all the way along this side on top of my slats. Um, so I've got loads of room for spring sowing all my veg and flowers and things. And, and you might think, why do um, I worry? But because this is unheated, I have got power here. Um, because it's unheated, these greenhouses will get every bit as cold as they will outside. You know, it, this glass does not protect much from cold frost at all. Um, 
but it is sunken this one which makes a difference because I've sunken it it does retain heat a little bit better in the olden days they used to have these stove houses which were just purely the glass lights above the ground and there was one in a garden I worked on just up the road at Hollywell and that they never used to heat and it always was frost free during the winter months because obviously under the ground you get a much steadier cooler well warmer air when it's cold outside the ground really does insulate it so please don't be put off my my monkey tomatoes but be rest assured that i will be having homegrown tomatoes till christmas not so many but some i never buy tomatoes i much prefer homegrown but i hope you can get all your plants through the winter um, i hope it's not a really hard winter and good luck with your pelargoniums <laughs>